guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm gonna go over how you debug multiplayer in Unity. And this goes further than just debugging multiplayer, this is also just general debugging nice to haves. So, first of all, one issue that I've been met with a lot after my first fishnet tutorial is the spawnable prefabs is null on the network manager issue. Now, the thing here is that I don't really understand is the error very clearly even tells you what to do. But I'm getting a lot of comments and a lot of people on my Discord asking about this. So, let's just go over that first of all. So, it says spawnable prefabs is null on the network manager. So it says select the network manager in scene debugging, that's the scene I'm in, and choose a prefabs file. So it's the spawnable prefabs on the network manager. So let's click on the network manager. Let's find the spawnable prefabs and make sure that we populate that with the default prefab objects as it actually also states right here. Now that that's out the way, let's get into the actual meat of the video. Now I have this cube here, which is called the hit zone. This is just a trigger. And let me just give that for that sake a rigid body. One thing that's just a general good to know is that for a on trigger end to work, either one of the parts have to have a rigid body on it for the collision detection it's a bit weird but that's just how it is so that's a good to know but let's go into the hit zone script first of all and this is a very 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 simple and very enclosed networking setup so all i have here is an on trigger enter which everybody checks keep in mind and there's technically no reason for this to be a network behavior but that's just what we do now now this checks does this hit a object or a collider that has the component of player health debug on it and checks also are we the owner of this which is just to make sure that this is only called once so this is basically a local setup what it then does is it then grabs it which i've referenced as health and calls take damage and adds the value of 10. so let's go look at what this take damage function does so as you can see in here we just have a take damage function what this take damage function does is just it grabs health and deducts the damage. And as you can see, the health is a sync var. So you would think that this setup would very easily just work. You would walk into the trigger, it would call the take damage, and it would then deduct the health and the sync var would then synchronize it to the server, right? And you can also see I just put a debug.log in here just to make sure everything runs. So let's go over this one step at a time. So I'm going to start the server here. So this is the server window, and this down here is the client window. So start by running in here, and we see no log, and I'll go I'm going to run in here, and I don't see any log on the other one either so let's take it one step at a time and see okay what's the first thing that happens the first thing is we check if we hit the player health debug now going on to our player prefab here you can see that's no player health debug so that's obviously a good first step so i'm gonna add that you can see it already has 100 health and now you can see now it should find it and check if we're the owner call take damage and this should work so let me go and try again now starting in here this is the server we're gonna run in here and as you can see it called damaging player two times now this is a bit odd so let's go on to our player and just look at what happened so as you can see he has 80 health now now for good measure i'm gonna look on my other screen as well you can see the inspect here and here he also has 80 health so that works just as it should but for some reason he was hit twice so let's go on to the player and look at what happened here now one thing you'll notice here is i have both a character controller and a capsule collider now character controller is actually a collider in of itself that's also what is displaying out here so you can see if i disable the capsule collider you'll still see the green outline so let's try and remove the capsule collider and now let's try once again so let me grab the server so player here walk in here now you can see he was only damaged on 90 and i'm going to check on the other one and you can see this is synchronized correctly as well now let's go one step further and let's take the client and move him into the box as well now you would expect him to be damaged to 90 as well so let's walk in here and see it called it in the inspector over there damaging player one for 10 it says and as you can see he still has 100 health here and in his own inspector he has 90 health so what's going on it's not synchronizing that's odd right so let's go have a look at why that's not synchronizing now the best first step that you can do is always just look at the guides of fishnet fishnet has some really good guiding so let me just bring that up here i have the guide already which you can always find on fish-networking.gitbook.io or actually you can just write fish-networking.com it will bring you to this page as well and on the guides yes pretty good explanations of how everything works and now going under the sync bar you could start reading from the beginning which is pretty much a good thing to do to understand what's going on it's not exactly a long read but scrolling down a little bit you'll notice here it says this is a typical server side sync bar and this is a client side sync bar and well going and looking at ours we just typed sync bar like this but we had it called locally which means what we have set up here is a server side sync bar now two ways we can fix this we can either as per my sync bar video originally call it through a server rpc as he also mentioned here so we could have this just tell the server obviously to change this value or we could do the setup that he does here so let's do that so he does field dash sync bar and here he does the get and set but one thing that you'll notice with this is that we cannot so if i just do get and then server rbc set like so you'll notice that now we can't set the health to 100 anymore 
this will not work. We're going to have to do that either differently. But luckily for us, sync bars are always displayed unless you hide an inspector out here. So we can actually just set it from the inspector like that. And that should just work. So now let me go and try and play again. So here we go. Testing from the server first of all again. He She's walking in. Checking on the other screen. He got damage for 90. Now let's do the client. Walking him in. He got damage for 90 over there. And over here he's damaged for 90 as well. And as you can see, if you look at the inspector, he can walk in and out many times as we want you'll be damaged over and over again and both sides will get this update now now what's this video really for is it to show you how sync bars work no not at all now the thing is i want you to understand that beginning to debug is just the best thing that you could do first of all this log that i has here from the beginning is extremely useful to figure out if this line is even being called or not a lot of people when beginning working with multiplayer would probably just think oh it's gonna be the sync bar immediately that's the issue if they don't have this line but not realizing that this method is never actually being called because we didn't have the script on the object or maybe we did this check wrong or something like that it's also important to understand that if it stops here you can typically also do i do this a lot which is just debugging with a basic number to figure out how far did you get in the logs so as you can see debug one we debug two we can go in here and we can debug three we already do have a debug here but you get the idea and this way you can easily in the console figure out exactly where does your code stop running that is immensely useful and it's something i use quite a lot especially when debugging multiplayer because it can be so hard because things happen at different times on different screens and so on so to try and follow from the beginning to the end what happens it's extremely useful to just debug a lot just over debug feel like you're writing way too many debug logs i again i use debug logs all the time just grab this line copy it all over the place and just figure out where does my code stop now i hope this was helpful to you this video was really meant as just a i can copy and paste the link to people asking these at least simple debugging issues in my discord or in my comment section and so on hopefully as to help you guys understand how you can solve your own problems before you start asking around because i have a lot of people asking around about you know for example the spawnable prefabs issue or asking about null reference exceptions which are just the easiest ones to solve null reference exceptions typically tell you exactly what is wrong so hopefully this was helpful you if so a comment a like and a subscribe would be very much appreciated and i just hope that you have a wonderful day